topic today is values and our careers. Why it's important to know what's important to us. A value is a deeply held conviction and it influences your thinking when you're faced with choices. As Webster's Encyclopedic Dictionary says, a value is something like a principle or a quality that is intrinsically desirable or valuable. It's kind of tricky to define a word with the word in it, but you can see from these two definitions that a value is something that's really important. And not only is it important, but it's very influential as well. Can you think about how values are not quite the same as an attitude or a belief or even an interest? You may have hit a nail on the head if you said that attitudes and beliefs and interests can kind of come and go with the season, right? What you were interested in when you were seven years old may not be the same thing that you're interested in now. And your attitude could depend on the weather or the current situation in your life. Value is something that's much more deeply held and much more a part of who you are. As one of the famous career theorists, Donald Super said in 1996, true values are a guiding light, stars to steer by. Again, we get the sense that values guide us and they denote what is important to us, which can be self-motivating because if we know what's important to us, they can be kind of the fire that's pushing us toward our goals and dreams. They influence our decisions, as I've said before. And because of that reason, they may also be related to time spent in an activity. If you don't value something, you don't really spend much time doing it or spending time with it, right? If you say that you're a very family-oriented person, but you see your family once every five years, I would question whether that was something that was really a value in your life. Also, it's important to note that values vary based on our experiences. You may not know some of your values or have not uncovered them yet because you haven't had an experience that's really brought them to light. Values can be categorized into two broad categories, expressed values and implied and hidden values. Expressed values are influenced by others. And these others could be family members, like parents or siblings. They could be mentors in our lives or people that we look up to. They can also be expressed values on a societal level, right? Things that we think society values. Whereas implied or hidden values are really the true self and they're based on self-knowledge. First, we must know ourselves before we can say what's important to us. And why we think about them is really because values are fundamental to career planning. If they are what denotes what's important, if they are the guides and self-motivators to our decisions, we really want to find out what they are. Sadly, most people make career decisions based on expressed values, right? What my dad or mom wanted of me, what my girlfriend expects of me, what society says that I should be doing. But this can really lead to dissatisfaction, a lack of focus, unhappiness, depression, or even a lack of purpose as our values are not aligned with the decisions that we're making. Although values are deeply held convictions, they do change over time. Think back to your childhood. What values did you adopt from your parents, friends, teachers, or significant adults in your life? It's interesting, but you can tell the values of a culture by looking at some of their children's storybooks. Many times, the lessons that we learn from those stories are echoing the values of that culture. Then think back to your adolescence, those rebellious years, right? Whether that was true for you or not. This is a time that there's a critical evaluation of your values, right? You might keep some of the values that you were brought up with, and you may shed other ones that you no longer feel resonate with you. This is also a time of exploration, so you could be trying new values. Think about the new experiences or hair colors or outfits or groups of friends that you tried hanging out with. This is a time of identity exploration. And in trying some, you may have added some values to your repertoire. And as adults, usually our values are stable. 
We've gone through childhood where our values were mainly given to us by the people that were important to us. And we've progressed through adolescence where we've done some reevaluation. And when we get to adulthood, usually our value, values are stable. And yet, what's a bit difficult here is that we don't often reassess them in this adulthood stage. We don't think about whether our values are productive or are really helping us and empowering us in the decisions that we're making. Let's do a quick exercise with one another. An exercise that'll help you think of what you value. Ask yourself these seven questions. You may want to jot it down to remember them. One, what do I prize or cherish? Two, what do I publicly support or defend? Three, have I chosen this freely? Meaning that you haven't been influenced by an external person or thing or pressure. Four, have I picked this from others? Or in other words, did you have a choice? Did you pick this one thing out of the rest of possibilities or choices? Five, have I thought about the consequences of this choice? Six, have I acted on this value? Again, are your values in line with the decisions that you're making? Seven, have I consistently repeated a pattern of behavior in regards to this value? If you answer yes to all, or questions three to seven, this is a really important value to you and one that will probably keep coming up over and over and over again. When we think about our personal values, some theorists have put together six basic personal value orientations. Based on the previous activity that we did, think about which one you are as I describe them. And remember, these are just broad categories. You may not fit into one, or you may find yourself fitting into many of them, and that's okay. This is just to give you a basic framework. The first value orientation is theoretical. These people are interested in the truth and its discovery. They can be described as using empirical, rational, and intellectual approaches. Think of your stereotypical scientist who wants to learn and discover things using a logical approach. The next value orientation is an economical one. And they would be interested in what is practical and useful. And they would embrace the business world, and maybe even be interested in surpassing people in wealth and influence. An aesthetic value orientation would focus on form and harmony, and maybe look at grace, symmetry, or fitness. They may think that each stage of life should be enjoyed as we progress through it. Social value orientations believe in loving and caring for other humans. And they may see some of the previous value orientations like theoretical, economical, or aesthetic orientations as cold and devoid of that caring relationship. Political value orientations be focused on power, influence, and fame. And lastly, religious value orientations may be concerned with unity of experience and relate themselves to the all-embracing totality. Did you see where you fit? Do you fit into more than one? What does this tell you about the values that are coming up as we go through this presentation? Values are tied to our meaning and our purpose. When we know our values, we can align them with our decisions, which in turn creates harmony, meaning, and purpose. So do you want to know what your meaning and purpose is? Start with your values. The various activities and readings for the rest of the week will help you to clarify and to think about these in an analytical way. Let's do another activity together. Take out a sheet of paper. And imagine that you have lived to be 101. What would you want to be said in your eulogy? What kind of person were you? What did you accomplish? What did you value in your life? 
what would your family and friends say about you? Now, of course, this isn't going to be what really is going to be said. These are your wants and wishes. And in writing some of these down, they may give you a hint as to what you really value and what you really want to be known for. Tapping into these can really help you live a long and successful life in a career that not only fulfills the values that you have in your life, but really aligns you with your highest level of meaning and purpose, which can lead to satisfaction. Isn't that what we all want? To not only be happy in our careers, but to be living out our own personal purpose? I hope that the rest of the activities and assignments this week will help you to think about and clarify your values.